Hello and welcome to the translation webinar. Today um, I would like to present to you the add-on to the translations. We are pleased to present you all the functionalities of the add-on tool and for your information you can also find the German version of this webinar online on YouTube. Let's start with the presentation. Okay, so let's start with the general facts about the Doku Performer. So first of all, um, Doku Performer supports the BW, so for example, um, BW until 7.5 and BB for HANA and um, all the workbench entities and the entities of the Business Explorer, ABAP and um, BW on HANA. But Doku Performer also supports um, other components like BO, so SAP BO, so um, you can synchronize the entities of the Analysis for Office component, also Design Studio application, Web Intelligence and Lumira. Um, Sapana. So um, in this component, it's possible to um, to work with the security entities like roles and user, and also with different views like analy an analytical views, attributable views, and calculation views. And then, last but not least, the sub BPC component. In this component, we support the versions 10.0, 10.1, and uh, 11.0. And there, you can also work with environments, models, script logics, business process flows, and dimensions. So as you can see, the Doku Performer landscapes are expanding and um, in all of those uh, components you can interact with all the entities with, um, with the help of the modules. So let's take a look at the modules. So the first module is documentation. So you have the possibility to create technical documentations um, automatically. And um, the second module is the commenting module with the commenting module, you have the possibility to comment sub-entities. Um, you can also record professional knowledge, definitions or requirements and afterwards you can merge those comments with the technical information of, S of the SAP entities in one documentation. Another powerful function that the commenting module offers is, uh, are the scenarios. With the scenarios you can create project documentations or key figure catalogs or so on and um, you can simply assign entities your sub entities to this scenario and afterwards you can document them um, then the analysis module is a collection of functions it simplify your workflows and your maintenance and the maintenance of your systems so that you um, get a good good overview of your system um, the analysis fun module also offers a lot of housekeeping functions so if your system is growing you can stay um, on top of things and all in all it just support the sub users and solve everyday problems the last module is the modeling module um, this module supports you during the migration during migration projects for example if you like to migrate to bw for hana um, then you have the possibility to add your um, the old entities of your old system you can import the entities those entities to your to the doku performer you can adjust the settings you can change the namespace you can rename them you can also transfer old entities like dso's or infocubes to rdso's and then afterwards you can export them back um, to your new for example bw 4 hana system then the add-ons so we offer to add on tools. The data lineage is an add on for the analysis module, and you can create a mapping of all info objects and fields up to the data source, and the results are displayed in an Excel table. It's possible for BW info provider, for HANA repository views, and for ABAP CTS data definitions. And last but not least, translations. The, the main topic of this webinar. Now we will take a closer look at this add-on. Let's start with the theoretical facts. So why use translations? More and more customers are asking about translations because um, there are many reasons for translations nowadays. Um, because the BW system was maintained in one language and um, this, this is a case that um, happened a lot of clients and um, afterwards for example if you have an international focus <coughs> or if you outsourced your BW development to another country, then you have to translate all the descriptions manually. And um, you have to do it because um, the description in 
one language are not understandable for um, the developers of uh, the country, of other countries. And if you do it manually, then there are a lot of difficulties in SAP. For example, the first one is that um, if you if you log in into a into a subsystem, then SAP only show uh, shows you the descriptions of the um, log on language. So if you if you like to translate three languages, then you have to perform three logins with different languages in different languages. Another problem is that you have to identify all of the right places uh, of the object. So for example, is um, is the description is the description info provider specific or info object specific? Um, so you have to identify all the right places and all the right um, levels where the description was maintained. And this is the problem. So you have a, a huge manual effort and it's extremely time consuming. And um, these difficulties can be eliminated with translations. So first of all, it's really comfortable. So you can you can just search for a specific entity or for specific entities. You can load objects into a workspace and then you can display the descriptions of those entities. It's intelligent because we identified the right maintained area of the description. So is it info object specific? Is it info provider specific? And yes, then it's flexible because um, you can export the workspace into an Excel file. You can um, edit and you can translate the descriptions and afterwards you can import the, this Excel file back into Luku Performer and yeah, then you have all of the maintained um, maintained descriptions in translations. Next point is efficient. So translations offers an intelligent dictionary. This dictionary contains all translations done in the past. If you add an entity into the workspace and translations recognizes um, the descriptions of this entity, then um, translations will propose you uh, the um, translations of the certain descriptions and you can just um, apply them. Yes, and you can also export this dictionary. You can edit the dictionary in Excel and then you can upload it back into translations. Okay, then um, it's simple, so it's really easy to load the translated entities into your subsystem with just one click. And you can also write, write the entities on a transport request. Okay, so now I would like to show you all of these functions in Doku Performer. So this is the initial view of the Doku Performer. If you licensed this add-on tool, then you can find translations here in this ribbon add-ons and then translations. Then you need um, to connect with your subsystem because we load all sub entities in real time. So I will connect with this BW system. And in this step, I can um, select the master language and um, I need to explain this. So with the master language translations, uh, it determines the language settings for all other languages. So if two descriptions of an element are maintained on different levels, the master language decides at which level the description is maintained. So as a little example, you have one RDSO and um, you activated three languages, for example, English, French, and German. And um, for example, the English description is the master language and the description was uh, was made on the info provider level. So it's info provider specific. Um, then you have the German description. The German descript description is info object specific. And you like to um, add a French description. And this description um, will be info provider specific because the master language was, German, was English. And so description will be info provider specific. <coughs> Okay, so I select the German master language. And now let's have a closer look which entities are supported. So you see, um, for example, RDSO, so the BW and B, uh, BW for HANA, the new entities. We see analysis author authorizations, then um, calculated key figures, the info objects, characteristics, and key figures data sources, filter, HANA composite provider, info cubes, queries. So you can work with all of those 
all of these um, entity types. And for example, I select RDSO and then I can add a names namespace into this field. I can click on load and now I can, for example, add this RDSO into the workspace. I can also add more RDSOs, for example, these um, four RDSOs into the workspace. So this was wrong. This way. And then you see the description of this RDSOs. I can also remove entities from the workspace, also via drag and drop, or via the buttons. And um, then you see the descriptions of this RDSO. You see there's an English description, there's a German description, and no French description. I can also add more languages to this view, for example, these languages, and then the Google Performer search for the description in, of this language. <clears throat> the supported languages, um, we show all the, all the supported languages of your subsystem. So this view depends on the supported sub-languages that you installed in your subsystem. And yes, then another thing that I can do, I will remove those languages. I can show the depending entities. So I can click here, load depending elements, and then I can load the info objects, the fields, and the groups into this workspace. Yes, so you can see now we see the depending elements like the groups, the, <coughs> the info objects, the fields, and you see also, this is what I mentioned before, that we identify um, whether it's whether this description is info object specific or info provider specific. And as you can also see, there's a button here next to the, to the description and it's, and the dictionary suggests you a description. So for example, here it's land country. So in this case, country, and you can apply all of these suggestions um, with this button, apply all of proposals and then you see all proposals are added into the empty fields. Um, this was possible because of the dictionary. So as you can see, we have here <coughs> the dictionary with um, a lot of languages. You can also add um, other languages to this to this grid. For example, with the column chooser here, you can add um, yeah. Dutch or Polish, Russian, just click here on this field and this checkbox and then Russian appears here. Okay, so then you can just simply add uh, other descriptions. Okay, so you can also export, you can also export this grid with this button. And as you can see, we have now the entire table and we can maintain this table. We can translate all the descriptions and afterwards, if we finished our work, we can simply import the Excel back into translations and then you will have all of the translated descriptions in your dictionary. Okay, so in the next step, I would like to show you how we, how translations update the texts into SAP. So for this, I will remove the RDSO and I will open, I will select characteristics, the info objects. The namespace is all right, so I click on load and then I will add um, these four info objects into the workspace. As you can see, um, the dictionary recognizes the, um, the descriptions and propose to me descriptions, for example, country in this case, as I did it with RDSO, I can apply all proposals. And then I, the next step, I can just click on update text in SAP. And before I do this, I would like to show you in SAP that this text was not maintained yet. 
So as you can see, in this case, we only see um, we only see the technical name of the info of these four info objects. So now I click on update text in SAP. Translation is activating the info objects. And now I have the possibility to assign the objects to a transport request. So I will do this. And I can search for certain for a specific request. This is the right one. Then I click on apply. And now the performer said that all objects have been assigned to the transport request request and I finished my translations. Um, so let's have a look in SAP. So I'm I will search for the info object. And then and as you can see now we see all the, we see the description country of supplier and also here country of supplier. So the descriptions um, the translation worked. I will also show you the transport. As you can see, all the four objects are now added to the request. Okay, so as you see, it's really easy to translate entities with translations. And um, in the next step, I would like to show you, I would like to export this workspace. So it's another possibility to maintain description descriptions outside of the Doku performer. So for example, I add Italian to this workspace and then I export this workspace via this button. Export to Excel. I can select the folder and then you see now we have the workspace here we also see that here is Italian and then I can add um, I can add the translated description into this field so now just example I can save this to close it and then I can click here import from Excel This one, and now you will see that this will be filled with example. Here it is. So this is also a possibility. You can also you can you can also add more info objects to this Excel file, and um, you don't don't even need to um, to add the specific entities to the workspace. So you can just click on import from Excel, and then you will see all the entities um, which. Um, were maintained in the Excel in your workspace. So it's also a nice feature. Okay, so in the last step I would like to show you how we how translation translations works with queries. So therefore I load once again a query. I add it to the workspace. We don't need to tell it anymore. And then I have also the possibility to load the depending elements, so the conditions, the exceptions, and the variables. So as you can see, now we see all the depending elements of this query. <clears throat> and as I said before, you see all the areas, all the um, for example, info object specific or navigation attribute specific, info object specific. This is what I said before. And then you can edit them and translate the descriptions. So this was the live demo. So in the last step, I would like to show you the settings of translations. For example, you can find them here. You see that we, um, that you can 
decide whether you like to keep the entire history or if you like to restrict it to, if, um, for example, for um, the last two days. Um, you can find the history here. Um, yes, and then you can also decide the order, the language order. Um, here you can see all the languages that we support. And yes, so this is translations. If you need more information for translations, you can find it in our in our user manual. So this is our user manual, our online user manual. You can go on business to, to business warehouse and then to translations, and then you see um, uh, explanations um, regarding all functionalities. You can also see um, the supported entities, and um, yeah, we explain you the master language, the supported languages, the general navigation. So a lot of information. If you um, need more <coughs> information, just check our user manual. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Um, yeah, so if you like um, the functions um, and translations, then you have the possibility to um, test translations. You can test it for seven days, so it's a seven days trial. And um, it's not a big deal, so we just extend your existing license and then you can test translations. And yeah, just inform us, write us an email, um, and then we can arrange this trial. Okay, um, this was the translations webinar. Um, it was a pleasure to present to you all the functionalities of translations. Um, thank you very much for your attention, and um, it would be really nice if you join our um, future webinars. So have a nice day, have a nice weekend. Bye.